Today, I'm going to be talking about expected shortfall or conditional value at risk, which should become very important in the near future. And why is that? Well, back in 2008, the banking industry as a whole was largely reliant on value at risk as the measurement to measure the risk for a portfolio, an asset liability, etc. Well, it turns out that value at risk didn't really do a great job at measuring the actual tail risk, and we'll get into why that is. Now, the regulators, starting in 2013, put forward in their proposed Basel III documents that really the industry should be switching over to expected shortfall. So let's dive into why they want to make that switch and how this switch is going to affect things and how we can actually measure these calculations in Excel. Let's start off with a quick definition of value at risk or VAR. So VAR is a statistical measure that quantifies the potential loss for a given confidence level and time horizon. In this example, let's say we're looking at the S&P 500 returns. So we just want to buy into the index for a one year period. Now, if we're looking at S&P 500 returns for one year, it's typical that the S&P 500 returns about 7%. So that is our mean directly in the middle of the distribution of our potential returns. However, if we have a good year, we might get up to 14% or even 21%, but this is a outlier year that is farther out into the tail. Whereas if we go back down into the left tail and we have a bad year, we might lose 0% or even negative 7% or even more. And so now, if we want to look at our VAR on this distribution, let's say we want to look at the 95th percent confidence level VAR. So we're going to be taking one minus 95th percentile, which gives us basically we're looking at the fifth percentile tail here. And so we can chop this off and say, hey, maybe, maybe that's like right here. Maybe it's like right here. And so if I look at this distribution, perhaps this the rest of this distribution has about 95% of the returns. And then this side has about 5% of the returns, okay? So this would be our VAR. And this might be, let's say, 3.5% or negative 3.5%. Now, what is the limitation of VAR? So VAR does not capture the severity of losses beyond the threshold and is not a coherent risk measure. So let's talk about this. This is what I want to focus on, severity of losses beyond the threshold. So what if instead of looking like this, our distribution actually looked like this? So we're going to take away this sort of normal um, look of this curve. And then let's say this falls off like this really quick. And then it's super low like that. And then there's more outcomes that happen in this tail. Well, our VAR is not going to change at all because this might still be the fifth percentile cutoff. So our VAR is still negative 3.5%, but hey, we have way more risk now than we did uh, back when the distribution looked more normal. So there's all this tail risk that is actually more likely to happen, and we have zero measurement of that. So this is what was happening in 2008 is they did not account for this high tail risk out here. Now let's talk about conditional value at risk or expected shortfall. So expected shortfall is the average loss beyond the VAR threshold for a given confidence level. So let's say we stick with the same example. We have the one year returns for S&P 500, uh, average returns about 7%, and then we have this sort of distribution, just like the last time. And again, we're gonna look at that 95th percentile confidence level, which puts us out into the fifth percentile tail. And so if we just drew that right here, let's just kind of stick with the same numbers as last time. Here's our VAR, which is basically five or uh, negative 3.5%. Then the expected shortfall would actually be the average of everything here. So if we took an average of all of these observations, that would be our expected shortfall. Who knows? I'm going to make up a number and let's just say the expected shortfall is equal to like negative 8%. Now, if we do the same thing where we take this distribution, we change it a little bit. So we just modify basically this tail so that we still only have fifth five percentile out in this tail. This cuts off rather abruptly. 
then this kind of has a lump out here. So then we're actually going to, again, we'll have that same VAR. The VAR doesn't change because this is still the fifth percentile cutoff. But now the expected shortfall actually is taking an average of all of these numbers, right? And so now instead of the expected shortfall sitting at negative 8%, we might find that our expected shortfall is now like negative 15%. So expected shortfall is addressing the limitations that VAR has by capturing the severity of the losses in the tail of the distribution, which makes it satisfy the properties of being a coherent risk measure, which the financial regulators are requiring. To really nail this concept home, let's look at an example where we'll calculate value at risk and expected shortfall in Excel. And what I've got here is the entire price history of the largest ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index known as SPY. It's been out for more than 30 years and I've got the price history all the way back to its origination. So we're going to be able to calculate uh, the value at risk and expected shortfall for one day holding period based on this data. But the first thing we need is the daily returns. So we can start off here doing equals LN. Now I'm gonna use the uh, natural logarithm method to calculate the daily returns. So I'll take one day's price divided by the previous day's stock price and hit enter. And we find that on February 1st of 1993 that this uh, index or this ETF returned about 0.71%. I can double click this to shoot it all the way down. So now we have all the daily returns. And we can see how they look here. And it doesn't really look like a normal bell curve, does it? So we can see that uh, this, this tail is really fat, right? So stock returns don't often behave like a normal bell curve would. And so we're seeing fatter tails and a taller peak. But now we can calculate VAR. So VAR is going to be equal to the mean plus the Z score at that confidence level multiplied by the standard deviation. And so this is the parametric method for calculating VAR that I'm using. I have videos on how to calculate VAR in uh, all the three different main methods. So historical method, Monte Carlo method, and parametric method if you're interested in. So let's look at the mean for the daily returns first, which is going to be equal to the average. And we'll just grab here, control shift down arrow, enter. So the average daily return for basically the last 30 years or so was 0.0382%. And now we need the standard deviation of the daily returns, which is going to be equal to standard dev dot P. So we can do dot P or dot S. I'm gonna use dot P because I really do have the full population of all of the SPY returns since it began. And I'll hit control shift down arrow, enter. And now we find our daily standard deviation. Now we really have everything we need to calculate the one day VAR. And we'll start with the confidence interval for the 99th percentile, which is going to be further out into the tails than the other ones. So we'll use this formula, which is equal to the mean plus the z-score for the confidence interval, which is just norm dot s dot in. And then the probability is going to be one minus this confidence interval. And then we have to multiply that z-score by the standard deviation. And I'm gonna hit F4 to lock that in. And I also have to lock in the mean with F4 as well and hit enter. We can drag this down to see the VAR for all the different confidence intervals. So one thing you'll notice is that the higher the confidence interval, the further we're going out into the tail, which means the more negative the VAR value should be. I wanted to show you one example really quick. So the VAR at the 95th, uh, the 95 percentile VAR, it's going to follow this formula, which is just equal to the mean plus, and then you have to think of the z-score. So if the z-score for the, uh, the fifth percentile of the tail would just be negative 1.645, and you just multiply that by the standard deviation. So basically all you're doing with VAR is you're just like starting at the mean basically, and then just multiplying that standard deviation by however stand many standard deviations you are away from that mean. So the further out into the tail, the more negative it gets. Now, sticking with that 95th percentile confidence interval, we can look at the distribution below and see that 
our VAR is about negative 1.9%, which I find about right in this bucket here. So for fun, I'm just gonna draw a line right here. So this is basically our VAR, this 95th percentile uh, uh, VAR value. And our expected shortfall for that same VAR is going to basically be the average of everything to the left of this line. Now, how would we go about calculating that? Well, it turns out there's a handy formula in Excel called equals average if, where we can grab a range, which we'll use our daily returns. Our criteria is that we're going to find everything that is less than or equal to this VAR value, so and, and then the VAR value for that specific confidence interval. And then our average range is going to be the daily returns once again, and hit enter. And so I can drag this all the way down and then we'll find our expected shortfall for every single confidence interval. And then sticking with the example of 95th percentile, we find that basically all the average of the average of all of these values is about negative 2.918%. And the one thing you'll notice is that for any given confidence interval, the expected shortfall should always be more negative than the VAR value for the same confidence interval because it's taking an average of everything that is less than it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you'd like to download the Excel file that I created in this video, you can click the link in the pinned comment or in the description to find a copy of the file. Also, if you would like one-on-one -on -one personalized tutoring with me, you can check my calendar on my website, ryanoconnellfinance.com to see if there's a time that fits your schedule. Thank you so much for watching this video and please subscribe for more just like it.